Hi, my name is Julie Meyer, and I want to share a story with you today, just some of my journey. People always like my stories of, of myself when I, you know, find God in a certain situation. So I wanted to just share one of my stories in, in finding the Lord when you blow it, because that's the most important time to find God. That's the most important time to meet God, not to wait two weeks till you're strong in the Lord again, but in that moment of brokenness to find what the Word says about you. It's what David did. I love David because King David studied and understood the emotions of God. Therefore, King David could run to God whenever he stumbled or whenever he sinned. He ran to the heart of God because he knew the emotions of God. And one of my favorite scriptures in Psalms, David says, you, d you deliver me, God, because you delight in me. You don't just deliver me, but you delight in me in the midst of it. So I wanted to share a story because I love this story, but several years ago I was on an airplane and I don't like to fly. It's just too high. It's just not natural. But this particular flight, we were flying over Denver and I was so scared. I was so scared. People were throwing their hands in the air and they were going, yee-haw! And I had coffee and I spilt it all over the guy next to me and I was so scared that literally all I could do was put my hands on the seat of the airplane and go God 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 I couldn't even speak in tongues because I had too many syllables I couldn't even say Jesus I was so nervous that I just sat there and I just kept going God God and then I felt awful because I thought what if something does happen I mean I know Jesus I know where I'm going and they're all having a, a, a lot better time than I am they are having to minister to me and I was like a worship leader going to a conference and all I could do was sit in my chair and go God God well, this grandma, who's to my right, she started patting my leg. And she goes, honey, it's going to be okay. You know, this happens a lot when we're flying over Denver. And she started talking to me, and she started saying, well, now, what are you going to do? I mean, what are you doing? And I said, well, I'm going to Portland, Oregon. And she said, well, what do you do? And I said, well, I'm a singer. And she said, well, what type of music do you sing? And I thought, well, I can't tell her. I'm the most scared of, I'm scareder than anybody on this whole plane. I can't tell her. I'm a worship leader, and I'm going to lead people into the presence of God. I, I'm just a mess. And so I looked at her, and I crossed my fingers, and I put them behind my back, and I said, I sing country music. Well, the plane landed. I got my worship book. I got my... Bible, and I went to my conference, and I felt awful. I thought, oh my gosh, what if she shows up at my conference? I was a mess. I thought, oh my gosh, and the whole time, I remember everything was in slow motion. I, I put my hands on the piano key, and I felt like I had this demon all around my head going, liar, liar, you're the lying worship leader, liar, you know, because I was going, here I am to worship, liar, liar. I mean, I just, I was just, that's, that's where I was. I felt absolutely, totally defeated, and I, I was just so broken because I, I, know, I know Jesus, and I love Jesus, and I went home that night. And I just, I felt like a failure. I was just like, God. And I, I really did. I was just, I, I was just, I felt broken. And I, I was grieved that I, I lied. And then I'm, I'm leading worship. And I felt so broke. And I just, I just did what I know to do. And I, I turned right to Song of Solomon 1.5. And I just said, even in my weakness, you love me. And, and that doesn't mean, God, that you love me in a year from now. And I mean, I said it, I said it over and over. It's so important that we meet him, that we experience his affections for us in our brokenness, 
That's how we, that's how we become strong is we have to know that he loves us right where we are. That, that, that leads us to take that step to him. It makes us strong. And what I did is I just took that word, the word, and I said, I said, today. I made it personal. We have to take the word of God and make it personal. And I took, I took that word and I said, God, today you love me. Today, right now, in my weakness, you say I'm lovely. Right now, today, in this very point in time, you say I'm lovely. This is the day. This is the point where you love me. And I said it over and over. I love you, Jesus. I love you. And I said, you love me. You love me. I am lovely to you right now, today, this moment. I'm lovely to you, God. I'm lovely. And you love me right now, today. And I tell you, I love that story because I encountered. And when I say the word encountered, it means I experienced, I felt the passion and the love that Jesus has for me in my weakness because I felt really weak that day. And I tell you that that story of weakness and failure, I met and I experienced his love and his passion for me. And I tell you, I've never ever been at that place again. And I've been on some pretty bumpy plane rides Never one time have I ever told anyone I am a country and western singer. I am so proud of the fact that in my weakness I met and I experienced the affection of Jesus. And I tell you, that's what David did, beloved. That's what Peter did when Peter denied the Lord three times. But I tell you, when it's the same thing when Jesus went to Peter and said, Peter, do you love me? He said it three times, Peter, do you love me? Feed my sheep. Because in the, in the moment of Peter's failure, Jesus went to him because Jesus saw such destiny in Peter's life. And in Peter's brokenness and, and failure, he experienced, he experienced and felt face to face the, the love of Jesus Christ. And I want to invite you on that journey. Beloved, when you hear my story, when you think of Peter, when you think of David, when you look at your life and think, God, I'm, I'm so broken in this. I want to invite you to Song of Solomon's 1-5, that in your weakness, you're lovely. And I want to just invite you because what you have to do is you have to own this word. You have to own it and say, in my weakness, God, today you love me. And I just want to invite you to say it over and over and over and sing it. Sing it over and over and over and over until you know in the exact place where you are that you are lovely to God. It's not an invitation to stay weak. It's an invitation to become strong and become changed in the very moment of weakness and brokenness because, beloved, you are are beautiful. God says, in your weakness, you are lovely.